Hi, this video was released at a slightly off-topic time, many people have probably already updated to Windows 24H2, but it took time to create a video and test the officially published 24H2 build. In my opinion, preliminary builds are not the same, after all, something can still change. But now, when the official website clearly states that Microsoft recommends downloading and installing Windows 11 24H2, we can also make clear conclusions about this system. I downloaded it, installed it, analyzed the changes and also did tests to compare performance with previous versions 23H2 and 21H2. In this video I will share all this with you and you will find out whether it is worth switching to 24H2 as well as what are its pros and cons. Watch it in full, then you will definitely not miss anything important, because at different stages of the review we will touch on different nuances. And if you already have your own experience in using this version, write about it in the comments. We will start by downloading Windows from the official Microsoft website. I will install the system on a virtual machine, so I choose the last option – download the ISO image. It weighs almost 5.4 GB. After downloading, you can start the installation. I will do it on a virtual machine simulating a budget computer. It has certain specific hardware parameters optimal for my tests. And here, friends, is the first difference of Windows 24H2. For the first time since 2012, when Windows 8 was released, Microsoft has changed the design of the Windows installation program. The post-installation settings have changed many times, but this initial one, in my opinion, has remained unchanged for 12 years. And finally, something more modern, which is already intriguing. Apparently, there are special rates on 24H2. Someone calls it Windows 12. Well, we will check this out. I like the new installation program after selecting the language and keyboard layout, we choose what we want – to install Windows or repair the one that is. And to continue, you need to confirm that I agree to delete all application files and settings – a good reminder for beginners. Next, we have the option to skip entering the license code. As before, select the edition and accept the agreement. The page for working with the disk has changed its design and functionality. In addition to the usual operations, it is now possible to use the online disk and expand petitions. After selecting the disk for installation, we see a page for checking the installation settings. Please note that nothing will be saved. This means that Windows will not be installed next to the old one, creating Windows.old the partition will be formatted. Also, here you can check the compatibility of your devices with the new Windows 11. Further installation is similar to the process of resetting Windows 11 to factory settings. The next stages of installation and system configuration are no different, so we will skip them. But immediately after installation we see another radical innovation. This is an updated OneDrive. This is a very important part of the system, although it can be removed from the computer. But for example, I use folders, documents, downloads, videos, etc., which are stored in the OneDrive section of my account. I don't sync them with the cloud, I use other backups, but I still use them. And here is a very interesting offer. You can immediately specify a different location for the OneDrive folder. Not on drive C, but for example on drive D. This is a good option. Then, if you need to reinstall Windows, you won't have to waste time transferring your important files in documents on the desktop, they will already be on drive D, and drive C can be easily formatted. You can also immediately select which folders you want to save on the cloud. This page was also not there before. Next comes a short tutorial, advertising, and an offer to install OneDrive on a mobile. For the purity of further tests, I want to disable OneDrive. Here you can see that it has been updated. The settings page is in style of Windows parameters. You can unlink this PC from the account and exit the program. Now let's see what else is essentially new here cumulative checkpoint updates. The point is that now updates for Windows are delivered in a new way, not as a wall selection of cumulative updates as before, but using checkpoints. Such a point, as I understand it, can be a certain assembly and new updates are selected specifically for it, so that you do not download an extra amount of information. It should be faster and take up less space, and some small updates will not even need a reboot. Sounds good, let's see how it will be in practice. Security. 
Here, according to Microsoft report, they worked a lot. Even the settings and algorithm for setting up passwords for the user, as well as various unnoticeable moments, have been changed to protect your PC from hacking. This is also not bad. Copilot. There was a lot of talk about it. We expected Windows to have its own Jarvis, but something like that is only possible on special processors based on the Neural Processor Unit (NPU), which are installed in computers called Copilot Plus. There, Copilot will be able to use these resources to perform cool actions, for example, improve your appearance during video calls, generate subtitles in real time, create images based on your sketches in Paint, generate images by AI, improve the resolution in games. And in our old computers, Copilot is now something like help and text AI chat. Nothing special. But now it is less integrated into the system and can be removed if desired. Removed functions. Microsoft not only adds but also removes those unnecessary word path and all join were removed, as well as Cartana, the old mail and calendar applications, maps, people and movies and TV. There is no need to even talk about them, everyone deleted them manually or didn't even know that they exist and what they are for. And if you do not know yet that I made a program for more convenient removal of unnecessary functions from Windows, I will remind you about it. It is called PC No Problems. It can disable unnecessary built-in programs and services, has interesting settings and good cleaning of the cache. I myself constantly use it because it is much more convenient than doing everything manually through the registry and command prompt. It even disables Microsoft Antivirus. I checked in version 24H2, the antivirus is disabled no problems. Link in description. There are some cool paid functions, but all the main ones work for free. Tens of thousands of users have already tried it. Context menu. Under the icons cut, copy, there are inscriptions, otherwise it was difficult for beginners to find the necessary actions in the new context menu. I still switch to the classic context menu in the PC No Problems program, this is very easy to do. It seems that I have covered the main innovations, it is time to move on to the tests. I will not do many of them unless there are some real differences in performance compared to previous Windows releases. Let's start by analyzing the readings in the task manager. Here we can see how many processes the system launches to work in the background and how much RAM it consumes. To make the comparison as fair as possible, I turn off the internet, wait a certain amount of time for the system to stabilize and go into a calm state. Then I launch a benchmark to simulate the launch of a demanding program or game and after it runs I measure the readings of how much minimum resources the system requires when we occupy them with our programs and games. The result is this. There is no difference in resource consumption and in the number of running processes, neither in comparison with 23H2 nor in comparison with older 21H2. Test number 2. It's my favorite. Familiar benchmark sign bench. Under the same conditions, a quiet system, no internet and maximum power, we test the processor's performance when calculating. This shows how much the system allows the processor to show itself in solving a certain problem. And here are the results we got on the same machine with different versions of Windows. You are shown the highest values from several measurements. Version 23H2 is even a little more productive than 24H2, somewhere by 1%, but still. And version 21H2 fell behind because I didn't install updates on it. If you update it, its performance is comparable with 23H2. It is not clear why 24H2 showed a lower figure, perhaps it was loaded with new background processes. This concludes our acquaintance with the facts of this issue, and it is time for conclusions. Let me voice my opinion regarding the system in this form. I will tell you who does not need to upgrade to the new system and who does need to do so. First, who shouldn't upgrade to the new system? Judging by the tests, the performance of the new version of Windows is no better and maybe even a little worse. I didn't notice anything special in the innovations of this system. Therefore, if you have a used computer and you, like me, appreciate performance, optimization and minimalism, 
then there is no point in upgrading. I will give you a case from my life, I had to reinstall Windows and I installed a clean 23H2, worked for a couple of days and realized that it feels like you are driving a car with a trunk full of bricks. The engine seems to be pulling, but you feel the heaviness. And only after I used the PC No Problems app and left only what I needed, everything became easy and fast again. And here is the question, if I delete unnecessary things from the previous version of Windows and disable updates, why do I need a new version in which I don't need anything? If you have the same opinion, you don't need Windows 24 H2. Second, who should upgrade? If you have a new computer, a ton of resources, you like everything and more, or you just don't care how clogged your system is, then upgrade calmly. Or maybe you liked some of the innovations in the 24H2 system and you want to have this version and optimize it. Also no problem, there is nothing negative about it. I'm not at all against the new version, it seems pretty good, especially if you go through optimization. Everything is left to your personal choice and preferences. But remember, each major update can bring problems to the computer if something is wrong with it at the moment. And if everything is fine with it, new major updates are always a small risk of incompatibility, drivers, optimization settings, etc. Some users shared that in 24H2 they have lost drivers or have errors. If we are talking about a clean installation, feel free to install Windows 11 24H2 right away. If you like minimalism, then 21H2 plus PCNP app. The choice is yours and it's very interesting to read about your choice and conclusions in the comments. Our opinions may be different, everyone has their own view of things and experience, share, it will be useful for everyone and comments to this video are support for promotion.